You are watching Business Heroine TV for the entrepreneur who says she will and does. Join the Business Heroine community today at businessheroinemagazine.com. And now, tune into the show. Hi there, heroine. I'm Ann Perry, founder of Business Heroine, and I'm here today with a special guest, Alara Payton. Now, Alara combines spiritual intuition and sacred heart wisdom to help women make peace with their past, their body, and their life so that they can live powerfully in the now and create the deeply fulfilling lives that they desire. Her 24 years of practice as a physical therapist under the name of Brenda Hope Gibbs, which you may know her by, supports her expertise as an inner journey specialist spiritual intuitive energy alchemist, sacred ceremonialist, and community mother drum portal journey guide. So women who are really sick and tired of being prisoners of their own past enjoy the freedom and possibilities that working with Alara offers them. With compassion, confidence, and grace, Alara guides each woman on her unique inner journey to heal past wounds and to return to her own sacred heart. Her deep transformation work inspires women around the world to reclaim their personal power, their authentic voice, and their empowered choice. Thank you so much, Alara, for being here and being here for the heroines today. Oh, it is my absolute delight to be here, Anne. Hmm. So I would love to hear more about your story. You share that you know you really help people heal from their past. What had happened in your own life? that brought you to do this work? Well, the most um, impactful, kind of the biggest part of the story that I wrote for my life, and I use story from the viewpoint that I believe that uh, we come here and we are actively participating in creating the life that, that we're living mm -hmm. and that I am uh, in that creative process ongoing. And so the biggest part of the story that I created was a sexual abuse as a child mm -hmm. with a grandfather. Mm -hmm. that I didn't have memories of until I was 40. However, I had lots of depression and anxiety and panic attacks and, you know, the types of things that go along with repressed post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. And when I was 40, I was pushed to the brink, literally, of ending my my life and finally went for help for that mm -hmm. and that process that journey of moving from being absolutely mired in victimhood mm -hmm. and the heaviness of that experience that was had not been processed and brought to peace was destroying my life and I decided I didn't want to keep doing that so that has been the biggest part of my journey and the mm -hmm. second biggest part of my life story has been that my my father was severely depressed mm -hmm. from the Second World War, unresolved post-traumatic stress disorder. And that really affected our family and my growing up. And my depression really affected my family, my mm -hmm. former husband and my children. And so those bringing those to peace has been absolutely instrumental, instrumental in me still being on the planet. I, yeah. I don't, if I had not found a way to bring that to peace, I don't know if I'd still be here. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty, pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and those are not small things and dealing with sexual abuse, dealing with depression, all of that, mm -hmm. you know, those are very real human experiences and they can, you know, as you mentioned, had a grip on you in so many ways throughout your whole life. Mm -hmm. So how, how have you made peace with your past? How did you do that? Well, traditional therapy, I started out with traditional psychotherapy and uh, found a couple of really good therapists who were able to get me through that really critical crisis point. And one day in uh, three years into my journey, I was introduced to energy work. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a social worker who did an energy session with me. And I was blown away by how that literally, I could feel it rewiring my brain and rewiring my whole body system. And I started on that pathway of the alternative journey. And then I've been working with people who do really powerful inner journey work to find out 
what part of me is stuck in the past, is feeling that it's still being traumatized, they're called split aparts, and running like a glitch in the system in the background. Mm -hmm. So finding those glitches and then bringing those parts back into the heart, gaining the wisdom of the message that they're still holding for me, and then reintegrating them back into the wholeness of me. So they become part of the wisdom of now, mm -hmm. rather than the stuckness of the past. Wow. Okay. So that's really profound. Um, I want to just dive in there a little bit more. Um, so first, when you talk about the wholeness of you and when you, you felt when you had this energy session and you felt your brain literally being rewired, what did that feel like? And what, what was the immediate relief or what did it feel like in your body once you had made that sort of peace and reintegrated with wholeness? What did that feel like? Well, I could not literally, literally could not get off that bed. Mm -hmm. I was like stuck to the bed. I couldn't open my eyes and I felt like fireworks were going off in my brain. I could see the fireworks. I could feel the fireworks. And what it felt to me was that my neural pathways mm -hmm. were being rewired. And I understand from the biology of belief that scientists are doing now that our cellular membrane also carries the memories. It's not just what's going on in the memory of our mind, but the memory of our body mm -hmm. and the cellular membrane. And I could feel that rewiring of these little synapses, little fireworks going off for three hours. I was on that bed. Wow. And when I got off the bed and went out to uh, my friend and, and the uh, social worker who were waiting for me, just allowing that I was in this deep transformation, I came out and they said, oh my gosh, you're glowing. I was glowing, and the stress of those years that had weighed on me and aged me, it was like I had a facelift. Wow. And that sense of the weight mm -hmm. that came off my body, came off of my shoulders, where I felt like I was Atlas, carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders, was lifted. Wow. Yeah. Profound. So profound. And the second thing that you mentioned there that I just want to extract is about how now when there are these other pieces of the past that kind of come in, there's still some maybe trauma, I'm not sure if that's the word you use, but these other pieces that are sort of fragmented away from your wholeness. Mm -hmm. And what I was hearing is that you're framing those as access to wholeness or messages to bring wholeness as opposed to there's something broken or there's something wrong. Is that yes. One of my teachers who does split apart work helped me to understand that if something is still active, what if it's like a little child that needs something? Have you ever had a two-year-old or three-year-old that grabs your sleeve and says, mommy or auntie, and pulls on your sleeve and you don't pay attention, so they, they pull harder and they start going louder, and then pretty soon they might be having a temper tantrum <laughs> right. to get the adult's attention because they have something they want to say or a need that they want met. Mm -hmm. So when I started to realize, wow, if these split aparts are triggered by something that's happening in the moment, mm -hmm. to me that means they have a message for me. They either have a need that's being unmet and has been unmet since whenever that split off happened, or they have something that's so important to tell me that they just... They, they they know that it'll change my life, and they want me to know. Yeah. And so being able to look at what's happening in the moment, I one of my uh, teachers, I've heard her say, you don't need to excavate the past. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go and dig up everything mm. from my past. What I do find pertinent is, what am I triggered by in the moment? Mm -hmm. What's happening for me in the moment? What am I feeling in the moment? And that's a key that there's something to be, um, to be present to mm -hmm. and gifted by and whatever it is that's going to unfold rather than ignoring it, suppressing it, and repressing it. Yeah, that's really amazing. And what an empowering way to look at those things from the past too that feel uncomfortable or beyond uncomfortable and to look at them in such an empowering perspective of how are they, how can we resolve something or what needs to be healed or what needs to be moved through. Um, I would love if you don't mind to just jump in with a personal experience of exactly what you're talking about. I'm, I'm just connecting with it because recently, several months ago, I was going through a period in my business where I was stretching myself to do something I've never done before 
and mm. it was taking every ounce of everything in me to push myself to this level or to, it was basically fear, like terror and fear was rising up. And so, um, it was pushing myself in the sense of allowing myself to experience the fear and, and move forward anyway, as opposed to shut down from the fear and, you know, thoughts that were there. It's like, Oh no, not this again. It's kind of, it feels like this pattern of like, I thought I was past this or I thought I, I would be on this. But really what I learned was, and, and this came from wisdom from a, a very wise friend, was allow it to be there and just b be present with it. And mm -hmm. very much like you're saying, it's the message that wants to come through or it's something that wants to rise up now in the moment so that it can be released. And so in working with it in that way, it did. It moved up and it moved through. And I was able to break through to a new level in my business that I never had before despite feeling completely terrified. So mm. I don't know, does that feel, is that an example of what you're talking about? Yes, a couple of things come to my mind of what has been holding me back. When I made the transition out of my physical therapy practice into the mind-body-spirit, I felt um, quite rejected and abandoned mm. by a, a lot of the people in the traditional medical field. They just didn't get where I was going and thought I was flaky. And the more and more I went into my spiritual journey, a lot of my old f friends and a lot of my family just thought I was having a nervous <laughs> breakdown. Mm -hmm. And I started to be curious about where my fears of abandonment came from. Mm -hmm. And I was able to go into my past, into my childhood, during the times of uh, having to keep a secret. Mm -hmm. I became a secret keeper. And it wasn't safe for me to show my brilliance in the world. It wasn't safe to stand out. I had created a story that I wouldn't be loved if people found out my secret. Mm -hmm. I'd also created a belief that shining your light in the world could cause bad people to be attracted to you. Mm -hmm. So I had this fighting going on inside of me, part of me wanting to go out into the world and be seen and bring my brilliance, and part of me pulling back and going, no, 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 that's too scary. So as I started to visit the timeline and go through my timeline and find out, as I step forward and I'm going forward in this business, I can feel there's this fear and this drag, like, who are you? Mm -hmm. Who of me is terrified? Mm -hmm. that I'm going to step forward and you're going to be unsafe. Mm -hmm. So to me, that fear was a, an indication that some part of me was feeling terrified mm -hmm. of exposure of something, you know, whatever. It just happened to me to be that exposure. Mm -hmm. So as I was able to bring that to completion, and part of that journey for me was also past lives, mm -hmm. that uh, I meet many women especially, but lots of men too in this heart-centered field that I'm in, who've experienced torture and death for what we're doing on this planet now in the way of energy work and plant work. You know, if you believe in that possibility of past lives and reincarnation, then that energy of that terror of now that happening mm -hmm. in our world now, that was really a drag on me. And there are real life stories on that we see in the news of women and men being tortured or killed for bringing their work into the world. Mm -hmm. So coming to that sense of peace. Wow, what's more painful? Um, not doing the work that I'm here to do and feeling squished down and suppressed and repressed and literally feeling like my spirit was being extinguished. Mm -hmm. Or having a possibility that I could so-called suffer for bringing my work into the world and maybe die. I don't know, but I realize that the slow torture of not being who I am, I'm not willing to live that slow torture anymore. Yeah. And I see, well, Marianne Williamson has um, been running for Congress in your beautiful country and seeing someone like that, I really admire her work. Stepping forward knowing that there's a risk in that. And she made a decision to be love in the world, mm -hmm. to teach love in the political arena. And those kind of women are inspiring me to step forward. Mm. And at my time of life, I'm going to be 60 next year. And I feel like my life is kind of restarting again. And I see women like Jean Houston, Barbara Marks Hubbard, who are in their 70s and 80s and actively engaging and making a difference in the world. And I'm so inspired that it doesn't matter what age we're at, mm -hmm. whatever age we're at, when we want to make a difference in the world, we can be supported.
mm-hmm. in coming forth and moving through our fears mm-hmm. with the aid of, of people who walk that road. So I'm really excited about um, the possibilities. I'm really yeah. Oh, I love it. And just as, you know, the women like Marianne Williamson who are standing for love despite, you know, an environment and climate that does not, you know, support that. And what you're doing in your work is totally inspiring. And I know that there are so many business heroines tuning in now who are connecting with, you know, I I could either have this slow, dull death or I could just go full out and put my work out in the world despite anything and you are serving as a really beautiful example of that so thank you you're welcome (laughs) (laughs) so I have a question for you what was the biggest shift in your perception of yourself and your business that really allowed you to start actualizing your business dreams into your reality now well a couple of months ago I was introduced to the concept of highly sensitive entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. After being in business programs for a couple of years with business coaches who are beautiful business warriors mm-hmm. and not being able to sustain the methods that were working really well for them and getting really frustrated and mm-hmm. getting down on myself and wondering if it was ever going to change, I was introduced to highly sensitive entrepreneurs. Uh, And I am now in that coaching program and gracefully blessed my business warrior coaches who I still love and admire the work they're doing in the world and realize, oh my gosh, no wonder I can't follow that model. It's not that there's something wrong with me. Apparently, 80% of people are business warriors. That's the energy that they embody and playing a bigger game and pushing through really works for them. I realized now, I've realized now that why it doesn't work for me. And so being in this program for 20% of entrepreneurs who, uh, coaches and healers who are highly sensitive and require a different approach, that has been key for me. Fascinating. And learning how to manage my energy and that I can't just push through. I am not the Olympic athlete who's going to stand at the podium. I'm what they call a royal advisor that will advise the athlete to get to the podium. But it's not in my energy to be the gold medal winner. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was judging myself for that. And so frustrated that I would would go forth and then I couldn't sustain it. I would kind of crash and burn. Yeah. I felt like actually manic depressive. Ah. And I was just going crazy, and I realized, no, it's because I'm working in a system that's not meant for me. Wow. So that's key. That's just happened since the beginning of the year, and so I'm really excited. Yeah. So I'm really curious, Alara, with this new knowledge of the highly sensitive entrepreneur and the business warrior world, what are some of the most important tools that you use on a regular basis to support your energy so you don't collapse in the in the you know predominant business warrior world well first and foremost is understanding that I have an energy bubble or an auric field and that that field is mine Mm -hmm. I believe we're all of one creator and yet I am one expression of life and I have my own energy bubble I didn't know how to handle that energy bubble I It was like I had leaks and tears in that energy bubble. I would leak energy out to other people or I'd let other people's energies into me. And I come to realize I'm an empath. And as a child, I was never taught how to manage the energy of other people around me. I would just take it on as my own. Mm -hmm. And just it got packed in me and packed in me. So learning how to handle my own energy bubble, release other people's energies out of my field, no matter how long I'd been holding them, and learning how to ground my energy down into the ground so that I'm not like a balloon floating up in the air. I'm a a ball of energy that has a beautiful energy cord that goes right down to the heart of Mother Earth. And the Earth nurtures me. I'm not alone on this planet. I can be nurtured and supported. And then having my energy connected to the God of my understanding, the heart of the cosmos, Mother Nature, whatever that might be for someone. For me, it's the the divine, the creator. And having access to that 
consciously knowing that I'm plugged in, tuned in, turned on to the greater energy and that I've contained my own energy, given everybody's energy back to them. That's been key in helping me navigate in a world that well, all we have to do is turn the television on for five minutes and watch the news. And most people can get kind of overwhelmed with what's going on. So that's been absolutely the number one key. So my training in my, on my spiritual journey a year, a few years ago after my mother died, I ended my uh, 33 year marriage and I went on a spiritual quest. Mm. I had teachings in the Incan tradition and the Hawaiian tradition. I'm now a drum keeper from that trip. All of those practices that uh, allow me to be present to my life and to be supported physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. That's been really key for me. Hmm. Thank you. That's really, really wise and, and helpful. And um, again, these conversations that are coming up feel like they've been in my awareness in the last few weeks. So I don't think it's an accident that we are talking <laughs> today, but it's just so important to manage that energy and to ha be connected because if we're here to get our, our work, our mission work out into the world, we have to know how to take care of ourselves and how to replenish and how to allow ourselves to be nurtured and how to tap in. That's, it, entrepreneurship now is not just about knowing marketing tactics and knowing how to, you know, sales and how to you know, break even analysis or, you know, all that stuff that you're taught in business school. That's a piece of it, but it's really so much deeper. It's about this mission work and it's about being connected as a soul and who we are and how we generate that out into the world. And it's, it's something quite, interesting is emerging these days in entrepreneurship. Yes, and I'm excited about topics that I hear, Sacred Economics, there's a book called Sacred Economics, A Soul of Money by one of my mentors, Lynn Twist, yeah. it's this whole conversation around money. I had a lot of judgment to money from cultural influences, my family, the depression, uh, coming from homesteader stock. So I had a lot of judgment around money and business, and I realized that was really putting up barriers to me flourishing in my life. And I decided I didn't want to stay focused on that. It's now, all right, what do I want to focus on? Mm -hmm. Who is doing work in the world that's resonant with me? Mm -hmm. I don't need to serve 7.2 billion people on the planet. I do see women, especially every day in my life, who are stuck in trauma, Mm -hmm. in old stories that they just can't break free from or addictive patterns of behavior that are so frustrating and so hurtful to themselves and ultimately to their families and their business that, uh, you know, that calling to get out there. I'm no more and no less than anyone else, no less and no more. And these women who are, you know, these talk about the soul contract that we have with people that, that we are destined, you and I are working together because we've had this date for quite some time at the soul level. There are women who are waiting for me to step yeah. forward into my brilliance. And I'm ready now, now that I've reached this point of understanding how I am wired as this entrepreneur. And then how can I support? The more I've come to peace with that, it's also getting excited about, wow, if I'm a royal advisor, I can be of assistance to business warriors and they can be of assistance to me. We can fill in the gaps for one another. It's not that we have to be separate. How do we work in collaboration mm -hmm. in a way that is uplifting for ourselves, the people we serve, and the planet mm -hmm. that we're here to help uplift? Absolutely. Very exciting. Woo! <laughs> Very exciting. So tell us, um, how do you work with, who do you work with and how do you work with them? I found that at the moment I'm working with spiritually based women. I find the age group that is most attracted to me is the 30 to 60, mm -hmm. the people, the women who are coming to my events. Um, I do the deep inner work to go on a treasure hunt to find out, let's say for example, you have a pain in your neck. 
I know as a physical therapist that the body speaks to us through the physical. I've also come to recognize as an energy worker that it is speaking to us through the vehicle of the pain because it has a also a deeper message, not just the physical, but what's the emotional and the uh, psychological energetic message. So my training is to go into the body to find out what that pain message is about. What's the treasure it's holding? What's the gem of wisdom that if it was brought into that person's everyday life, it could help them to empower being who they are Mm -hmm. and to actually gain access to that deep wisdom Mm -hmm. that that life experience has offered to them instead of being split apart and remaining in the trauma. It now becomes actually a part of how they powerfully live life now Mm -hmm. and are able to then notice, Oh, I'm triggered again. Wow. Isn't that interesting? What's that about? Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm so triggered again. Isn't that interesting? Let me check it out. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be another gift there. Isn't that cool? (laughs) So when I started looking at it as a treasure hunt, who doesn't like going on a treasure hunt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It can be some effort, you know, it can be effort because going on a treasure hunt, deep diving can be kind of hard work, you know, judging by people who do deep diving, but they love it anyway. They love the adventure. They love the, you know, the effort is worth it to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, Because what you're really coming out with is, being more of who you really are in your essence and being able to tap into the wisdom that's really there so you can be fully empowered in the present so that you can achieve your dreams that are close to your heart. That's right. That deeply fulfilling life. You know, when I was in an ambulance a few years ago thinking I was having a heart attack, Mm. thought I might actually die that night. Mm -hmm. And which was ironic because it was a couple of months before my mother's actual death. And Mm. we'd been so concerned about her. And I thought, oh my gosh, what if I die tonight? Mm. After all that worrying about mom, what if I don't get to complete my life? What have I not done? And there were conversations with my loved ones that I had not completed, which I ultimately did after that. And I have this music inside of me, this beautiful music that I realized I've been squishing down. And I recognized I was not going to be leaving that night with feeling like I had fulfilled Mm -hmm. what I came here to do. And whatever that fulfilling life is, is not up to me to determine for anyone else. I'm discovering it for myself day by day. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I do believe that as we access any unreconciled energies that are keeping us prisoner, not the ones that aren't keeping us prisoner, I don't need to go and find out what's not holding me prisoner, it's what's bogging me down, what's holding me back, triggering me constantly, keeping me in a state that I say I don't want and yes, I can't break out of it. That's what I want to bring to peace, Mm -hmm. bring to completion so that I can day by day, take the action steps that move me in the direction of the deeply fulfilling life that I'm living now and and building into for my so-called future. Yeah. And this is exactly the work that you do for others. So tell us about that. How can the business heroines here uh, work with you? First of all, there is a gift that I have for learning how to do the five steps for empowering your own energy mm. bubble and getting mm. grounded to Mother Earth and getting connected to the cosmos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's a 30-minute uh, meditation that I'm gifting to the business heroine, so you can practice that right away. And I am offering a 33% savings for your business heroines Yay. if they want to work with me individually. Oh, thank you so much. That's so generous. I love it because I was thinking, you know, as you were sharing about the bubble and managing that space, I'm like, ooh, I want those tools. So thank you. I will be, I will be grabbing that meditation myself. And I definitely encourage everyone tuning in to grab that for free too. Thank you. And a 33% savings as well. Very generous. So a lot of, thank you so much for joining us today. I would love to hear if there's Any last words, any, the most important point that you want our uh, business heroines to take away with them today? I say it's never too late to make peace with your past, peace with your body, peace with your life, Mm. so that you can live more and more powerfully now and make those decisions that you make day by day to create that deep 
uniquely fulfilling life that you are calling forth for yourself mm -hmm. so that you can truly at that end of your life say wow job well done I did the best I could what a ride yeah oh beautiful Thank you so much for joining us. I loved this conversation. I love the gift that you are. And um, I can't wait for the business heroines to take advantage of that meditation and working with you. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I look forward to continuing the adventure with you, and we traveled a little bit together through um, a beautiful program that I was in in the past with you, and I really admire the work that you are doing and inspiring business heroines to step forward and to be all that they aspire to be. So thank mm -hmm. you for this opportunity to share my work. Oh, awesome. And thank you, heroines, for tuning in. It's lovely to have you with us as always, and we will see you next time. Bye. You have been watching Business Heroine TV for the entrepreneur who says she will and does. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out what's new at businessheroinemagazine.com today.